and, and, and really just being led by the Spirit and realizing that uh, serving God is a spiritual work, as we've been talking about, and uh, various things and the importance of it. And we just celebrated Pentecost this past Sunday. Again, we, well, it, it was the time of Pentecost, uh, the holiday, the day of Pentecost, and we broke some of that down Sunday morning. And uh, I want you to turn back with me to the book of Acts chapter 1. One and two real quickly, just to hit some of this, but we're not going to focus so much on it. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit today, but we're going to uh, deal with some other things about the Holy The benefits of the Holy Spirit as we continue that uh, thought pattern there, all right? How many need the Holy Spirit? Amen. We need it. We need it. And so um, let's pick it up in John, Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 5. The Bible says, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And we mentioned again how a baptism is a, a submerging or in, being induced into something or endoused into something, right? As we think about water being submerged into water, but also being submerged into the fire of his Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> being submerged in fire, baptism of the Holy Ghost. To being baptized in fire. So again, where the Spirit of God comes and fills you up. And it fills your body, your mind, your heart, no doubt your soul, and you begin to be led by the Spirit. He says here, not many days hence, he was referring to what Jesus would do for them. As we mentioned, uh, we're going to go back and look at some of this in a second, about how he was about to leave. He was leaving earth, and, and he would no longer be with them. Again, and many times we depend on someone so much, uh, they, uh, you become dependent upon them. And so it's hard to function, really, and so, but God was going to give us something to function with, all right? And so he says, um, number seven, he says, and he said to them, it is not for you to know the time of seasons, which the Father has put in his own power. He said, but you shall re receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the other most parts of the earth. And again, back to verse six, they had asked, they said, are you coming to set your kingdom up right now? And he said, no, no, not right now. I'm going to back to heaven. And so as they did that, he went off into heaven as we cover. And he, they obeyed his word, and they, they went back to Jerusalem. And the Bible says in verses 2, chapter 2, verses 1, let's go to chapter 2, verse 1. The Bible says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. So again, the Pentecost day, it was, a, it was a marker, a time frame in which we speak of, was fully come. Again, uh, and the, day, the day was being fulfilled. That the, Again, they were all in one accord in one place. And in church today, we want to be in one accord with God. Amen. One accord with God, one accord with him and his spirit. And we mentioned about how we are body, soul, and spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. And uh, this is referring to back to the Holy Father, Son, and Holy Ghost also are one. And so we are to be as one with him also. Amen. And he says, there suddenly came a sound of mighty rushing wind. He said, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And he says, and they appeared unto them cloven tongues of fire. And it sat upon each one of them. And so again, the evidence of, of the Holy Spirit is tongues of fire also. You receive tongues of fire. What is that? Again, it's a heavenly language that God gives. It's a language, an unknown tongue that we can't even really uh, uh, describe. Or we can't even put, we don't even know really what we're saying. The Bible says, but it's a holy, heavenly, uh, holy language that God gives to you. Amen. And where you begin to uh, speak it as unto the Lord. As the Spirit of God gives utterance, sometimes there's an interpretation. Uh, again, as we read here in chapter 2, there was interpretations from other languages. Uh, people there, was a message that was brought forth. And if there is an interpretation, we won't go into it today, but again, uh, whether you speak in tongues, maybe God will give an interpretation of it. And again, as a message from God. But the most important is a it's, it's a sign, it's evidence that you have been filled with the Spirit. You should desire the Spirit of God. Amen. You should desire to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Again, we mentioned how it is beneficial. Back to what we said here in chapter 8, 1, verse 8, it says, It's power from on high. It's power to give, cause you to live for Christ. But let's go to chapter 14 of John, the Gospel of John. That's where he began to speak about the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of John, chapter 14, we'll look at and a few verses of Scripture here. And some of the benefits of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, some of the benefits of the Holy Spirit. Uh, in verses 6, we'll go there. He says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And if ye had known me, ye should have known my Father. From henceforth ye should know him and have seen him. And Philip said unto him, Lord, uh, show us the Father, and it suffices us. And Jesus said unto him, have, how, have, I not, have I been so long 
time with you, and yet hast thou not seen me, Philip? He says, He that seeth me hath seen the Father, and him saith, Thou then show us the Father. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, uh, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, else believe me for the very works sake. And he goes on and says, Verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me the works that I, I do shall he also do also the work great the, and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father let's pause right there for a minute again one that believes in God Christ's desire the heavenly father's desire also was to see us do greater works amen to do greater works and so he says when I go to my father he says you would do greater works than these amen number 13 he says and, and whatsoever you shall Ask in my name, that will I do, and the Father may be glorified in the Son. If he asks, if he shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. I will do it. And then I'm going to get down to where I want to go tonight. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter, and that he may abide with you forever. One of the things the Holy Spirit does, uh, uh, characteristic of the Holy Spirit, he's a comforter. Amen. Uh, another title for the Holy Spirit is a comforter tonight. Amen. A comforter, he says, I will go to my father and he will send the comforter to you. Amen. When he went back to heaven, he was going to send something that was going to keep you and comfort you all the days of your life. And it will help you and assist you, as we said. It will assist you, again, in, in doing the works of God and assist you in, in living for God. It's going to assist you in all things, as we're going to look at here in a minute. Uh, let's look at some more. He says, even the spirit of truth. So one of the benefits of the spirit of God in verse 17 is the spirit of truth. Amen. It gives you the spirit of truth, right? It gives you the spirit of truth. And so uh, uh, you think about this. Again, you be led in the spirit, by the spirit, to walk in truth. He wants to do the truth. He wants to do what's right because, again, of the Holy Spirit. Let's keep going. The Bible says, because I, it is seen, it, it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and ye sh and shall be in you. He said, when I leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye uh, see me because I live, and ye shall live also. But again, back to the point about the comforter, the comforter, the comforter. And then over in John chapter 15, John chapter 15 also, let's look at verse 26. He referred to it again. He was just really, these are some of the last words he would give to the disciples before he left. And he was really trying to comfort them and, and help them along the way because he was about to depart, and he was about to be crucified and then eventually depart. And this is what the verse said in verse 26. Said, but when the comforters come, he said, Whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. Another uh, uh, benefit or uh, example of you having the Holy Spirit is you begin to testify of Christ. Amen. You testify of the Lord. You want to be a testimony. Amen. And it also helps you in your testimony. Somebody got that? Because you have the Holy Spirit, your testimony uh, again, you will build a testimony for Christ. And again, what, it means, what does that mean? To where you can be known as a, a Christian. Amen. To live a Christian life and, and to have a testimony for Christ and say, I am a Christian. I know the Lord. Amen. I live for Christ. And so the Holy Spirit will help you with your testimony and will help you testify of him. Amen. Not to be ashamed of him. Not to be ashamed in, in public. Not to say, hey, I go to church. Yes, I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. Amen. Again today, uh, so you will help you testify of him. And not only that, but through your life, through your life, you will see the evidences of, of, of the Holy Spirit, and it will uh, test, uh, testify through your lifestyle and through the works. Amen. He should testify of me. So the Holy Spirit working in you will, will show the signs of Christ. Amen. In you. Does everybody follow that? Showing Christ in you, again, to, to show that, hey, he has the Holy Spirit. Amen. She's full of the Holy Ghost, again, because of the things that they do. And he says, also, so bear witness, because ye have seen, been with me from the beginning. And then over in chapter 16, just give you some of this real quick before we go to somewhere else. Chapter 16, the Bible talks about, he went on a little bit further. Same, it was the same, same message he was speaking, this whole three chapters he was speaking to his disciples. Verse 7, he says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. 
But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So he said, I must leave this place. I have to go. If I don't go, the comforter cannot come. Amen. And so we see, again, it was important for Jesus to leave, and no doubt. But he was going to give us what we needed. Amen. Give you what you needed to survive. Give you what you need to live victoriously. And so it was important for him to leave. He says, and when he is come, he will reprove the word of sin. So, let's look at this. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the, the power of God, the, the Holy Spirit we're talking about, it will reprove of sin. And so, again, it will convict of sin. It will, it will keep you from sin. Because you not to want to go there. Amen. Because you not to live in it and say, you know what, this is not right. We shouldn't be doing this. Oh, I shouldn't be doing this. It will reprove of that. It will rebuke you and say, hey, uh, again, make that right before God. Amen. Or don't go there. Or don't live that way. Or, or get right with God. Serve God. Live for God. It will keep you from it. Don't cause you not want to go into that. Amen. Go into any particular sin. And so the Bible says it will help reprove sin. It, it does that. And through the preaching of his word, again, it reprove, we reprove sin through the Holy, by the Holy Spirit. And, and not only that, but again, in your hearts. Again, it will keep you. And again, here, cause your radars to go up when sin, you approach with temptation. Everybody follow that. And so he says today of righteousness. So the, the Holy Spirit is coming because you live right. In verse 8, because you live right. Righteousness. Again today, do righteous. Do what's right before the Lord. Does everybody follow? To do what's right. He said, and of judgment. It will cause you to make sound judgment also. Again, God will one day judge the world. But again, we see, but also as you live your life for Christ, you can make sound judgments. Amen. The Holy Ghost will cause you to make sound judgments. Again, as you live for Christ, of sin because they believe not in me. So again, he referred back to this about how the Holy Ghost will do, the Comforter will come, and they will believe not because of him. Again, today, because of Jesus, they will reject Christ. Uh, again, but the Spirit of God was going to help them through the, all of this. As they preached the Gospels, they were persecuted. The Holy Ghost was going to help them through persecution also. Amen. He said, righteous because I go unto my Father and you see me no more. Um, let's go do something else, all right? But we thank God for the Holy Spirit. Again, one of the things about the Holy Spirit, back to verse chapter 14, verse 27, it was also peace. The Bible says in verse 27, again, 14, 27, he said here, it was peace, peace, peace. He said, peace, I leave with you. After the Holy Ghost has come, he said, peace, I will leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world give it, but I give it. Let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. So the Holy Ghost is a comfort again, there will be peace to the soul. Amen. Will bring peace to your soul through a troubled heart, with troubled times in your life. Right? When you're going through battles, again, the Holy Spirit will cause the storm to be peace in your heart, as we mentioned a few weeks ago. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. The peace of God. He's called the, uh, again, the dove is, the Spirit of God is referred to like a peace or, or referred to like a dove. Huh? Almost like an umpire. Yeah, yeah, that too. It, it does that. And so it brings peace to, to war. Amen. Peace to troubles. Or, it does so many things. It so many, does so many things. But again, in Colossians chapter 3, this is what it says in, in here, verses 15, 315. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. So again, this Holy Spirit, let it rule in your hearts and it will bring peace to the soul. Amen. The peace of God will rule. Let it rule in your hearts. And then one of the functions of the Holy Spirit is, again, peace. So let it rule in your hearts. To which you also are called in one body, be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. He says, teaching you and admonish you one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So again, peace, peace, the spirit of peace. Beyond understanding, beyond what you see, beyond what you go through. And it will, it will let Christ dwell richly in you. And so it's some of the key verses here. And, and, and again, just be at peace in what is whatever comes my way or your way. Let's look at Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Chapter 4, verses 6. Uh, yeah. The Bible says, be careful for nothing. He said, but hear everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. What's careful mean? Be careful for nothing. That means worried or troubled about anything. Is everybody follow that? Be careful for nothing. Another uh, uh, way of saying it is to be troubled for nothing, right? He says, but everything in prayer and supplication. So again, we learn to go to God in prayer. We learn to go to God and through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving and let your request be known unto God. So again, referring back to Jesus, when he said, let, make your request known unto God or call upon him, ask of the Father, ask of him. 
And no doubt he was able to do that. And so in the verse 7, I want to bring to you, he says, And the peace of God which passes all understanding. The peace of God which passes all understanding. So the Holy Spirit will help you uh, beyond what you even understand and why you're going through what you're going through, what you're facing, what you, why you're facing what you're facing. The Spirit of God will give you peace about certain things. Amen. It will help you through it all. Again, he says, we shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So it keeps you. The Holy Ghost will keep you. Uh, again, keep you in perfect peace. It will keep you in your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. And then uh, it will help you, guide you along the way. Let's look at verse 8 as we hear. He says, finally, my brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, uh, and the God of peace shall be with you. So again, peace. One of the evidences of the Holy Spirit is peace, so it brings peace to the soul, peace to the heart and soul. So again, the Holy Spirit also, back to verse 8, he said, it will help you do things that are true, things right before God. True, let me be true to myself, true to God, true Christian, amen, true living for him. And on there, but honest, to all honesty, honesty. They say honesty is the best policy, right? Right? And so uh, the Spirit of God will keep us honest. It keeps us, prevents us from lying and being not truthful. Again, today, uh, honest with yourself, honest with God. And, and the next one, he says, with just also. Living a just life, being fair, living a just life, treating people right and various things. He says, and pure, most importantly, pure. The Holy Ghost will keep you pure. Amen. Keep you pure, your heart, your mind pure before the Lord. Again, so, again, these are purposes and what the Holy Spirit will help us do. Let's look at some more. He says, and things that are lovely. So we think on these things. And so the Holy Spirit will, again, get your mind back on these things. When the mind drifts, the heart drifts, the soul drifts. Again, he says, think on these things. And the Spirit of God will help guide us back into these things. Amen. And, and the things that are of a good report are lovely. Excuse me, lovely. The things that are lovely. Think some things that are of love. Let us be full of love. Back to what we were talking about, the fruit of the Spirit a few weeks ago. One of the fruits of is love. Amen. So think on these things, to love other people, to love your soul, to love God. And then a uh, good report. When you follow the Holy Spirit, you want to uh, receive those things that have a good report. The Word of God. The Word of God is full of good reports. Amen? It's full of good reports. And, again, you read the Word. You, you want to uh, feed off the Word. You want to receive of that Word. Holy Spirit, again in the day, you, you want to think on these things. Amen. Let me get a hold of that Bible. Let me read some of that Bible. Let me live that Bible. Amen. And not only that, but you will want to, again, uh, have a good report with your life. Right? The Holy Spirit will cause you to have a good report. The Holy Spirit will cause you to have a good report. Does everybody follow that? It will cause you to want to live right. It will cause you, again in the day, your, your, your standing before God will be intact in because, again, of the Holy Spirit. So a good report. I want to live a life pleasing unto the Lord. It will keep you pleased, pleasing unto the Lord. Amen. And so these things, these things here, a good report. So, again, let me uh, do what's right before God because God is watching. God sees. He knows. Again, he sees things. and gets, uh, Many think they can hide from God or hide from men, but we can't hide from God today. Amen. Can't hide from God. And so let my report be good unto the God. He says, For if there be any virtue or morality, if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen. To so think on these things, the things of God, the things of God that are so important unto the Lord. So again, uh, the Holy Spirit, some of the benefits of the Holy Spirit. So they were endued with power. These are some of the purposes of the Holy Spirit to give you power to live and walk uprightly before the Lord. And we closed off the other day. We closed off the other day about this in, in Romans. Uh, I wanted to touch one more thing over there before we close out. I'm going to let you guys go. Amen on time today. Amen. <laughs> Romans chapter. Go back to Romans 8 real quickly. I want to finish this last little section I'm going to give you. And, and it was a piece that spilled over. Uh, and we kind of just briefly hit it here. But again, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God will help you in all your infirmities. Um, where'd he go? In verse 26, he says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth thy infirmities. For we should know what we should pray. But 
uh, the Spirit itself make an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So that's back to the speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance. Amen. So the Spirit of God, again, you don't know what we may say again today as we speak in other tongues. The Spirit of God gives utterance. But again, it is there to help make intercession for us. Amen. We make intercession before God. You make intercession as you receive the Holy Spirit. Speaking other tongues, they, they thought they were drunk. But no, it wasn't that in the book of Acts. Again, today it was a language from God. Amen. And so it helps you. This is we receive the Spirit of God. It helps you in your infirmity. Infirmities are weaknesses. Weaknesses. Things in which you can't get the victory over. That's what the Spirit of God was there to put them over the top. To put them over the top, as we covered the other night about, he says, uh, Peter said, he says, the, he told Peter, he says, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So then those infirmities, those things in which the flesh wants to do, the spirit of God now will help you in those things. Amen. It will help you in those things. So you pray in the Holy Spirit. You pray and receive the power from on God on high. So back in Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2 as we close out with this. The Bible says they receive power from on high. They received power. And they went out and they went with boldness. As you're going to see here, the Bible says that Peter was full of the Holy Ghost. In verse 4 again, 2 4, he says, and, and the Spirit of, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues. The Spirit of God gave reverence. And there was dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men of every nation under the tongue. Now, when this was annoyed abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because. Uh, that every man heard them speak with, the, with his own language. And they all were amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these that we speak at Liam? And how here we every man our own language wherein we were born. And he listed a whole bunch of languages that is, they were speaking in. Again, God sent the message to all these different people that were there. And, and in verse uh, 12, he says, And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what mean is this? And others mocking, saying, these men are full of new wine. And really, uh, if you think about it, they were full of new wine. They were full of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It was a spirit, and the Bible says, be not drunk with wine, wherein his actions be filled with the Spirit. It was a wine. It was a Holy Spirit wine. Amen. It, they, were, they were moved by the Spirit of God. And then, uh, this is what I'm going to bring you to as we finish. He says, Peter stand up with the eleven, lifted up his voice, and said, ye men of Galilee, ye all dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken my Unto my words, he said, For they, these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third day. But this is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel. And it came to pass in the last days, saying, God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, my, your sons and your daughters, and shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and old men shall dream dreams. He said, And on my, hand, on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heavens above, and the signs. And earth beneath blood and fire and vapors of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord. And it came, it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But again, it, Peter was filled with boldness here. He was filled with boldness. He was moved by the Spirit. But all of that, but he began to remind him of the prophecy of old that it was for everybody to receive it. Amen. It was for each one of you in hearing the sound of my voice to have the Holy Spirit. For every believer to be filled with it. To be filled with the Holy Ghost. To go out into, as Jesus said, go out to the uttermost parts of the earth. Jerusalem and Judea and the uttermost parts to preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. To be a witness. To go testify. Testify of me. Uh, of Jesus Christ himself. To testify of his word. To testify and tell somebody that he can save. To go out and share the good news. Amen. That he is risen. Amen. And through your life and through your actions. You can show that you can live victoriously for Christ. Amen. And so again, it's so important to get filled with the Holy Ghost. It's so important to get filled with God's power. And again, through his spirit, again, some of the evidence is again speaking in other tongues as the spirit of God gives others. So he gives you boldness. He gives you peace. He gives you guidance. He gives you wisdom. We, we didn't go all into it tonight, but he gives you so much that we need to live victoriously for Christ. Amen. Amen. We'll see you Thursday night, Lord willing. Come on back to the house of the Lord. Amen. Be with us here Thursday evening. And uh, we're looking forward to that. Praying for Brother Herb's dad also. Who's really, he's starting to get sick. And so he stayed back with him. He's been in at the hospital the past week or so. And uh, 
also you you don't know them but my neighbor next door she passed away this morning so we lift the family up in prayer also all right various ones hey man we excited what god's gonna be doing i can hear this thursday evening back in the house of lord and throughout the weekend amen let's invite somebody tell somebody be a witness go tell somebody of the good news of god amen be led by the spirit amen walk in the spirit and let the lord have his way god bless you reverend if you dismiss in prayer please Amen. Have a wonderful evening, folks.